I love pink as a child, and sometimes I think that maybe my mother used to dress me with some pink, so I think maybe uh, she wanted a girl, but she got a man. But what it taught me over the years was is that it's really just a color for me that really speaks so positively about life. It's kind of um, uh, you know, it's uh, it's uplifting. It's it's pleasurable. It's high energy. It's it's um, it's controversial pink, too, isn't it? You know, it's. Uh, and my, my, I decided about 15 years ago to kind of make pink. Not only love what I do, but I have no choice. So this is my destiny. My name's Karen Rashid, and I'm an industrial designer slash interior designer slash product designer, furniture designer, lighting designer, branding designer, graphic, etc. Basically, I'm, I'm a designer. So the collection's called Cobble, which is sort of an extension of the idea of cobblestones. So you can, if, if you look at the uh, collection itself, they are, they, they, the forms appear to be like natural stone in a way. So, you know, over time when they erode stone, especially when you see them come from the ocean, they're like so beautifully smooth and soft and, uh, and you just want to touch them and you want to engage them. The collection is made up of just uh, of four lamps that are, um, let's say, uh, typical um, typology of lamps. There's a floor lamp, which is just on my right side here, and then there's a wall sconce. It's just a little blob on the wall, and there's a small table lamp that's also, again, like a little blob that could be a nightlight, um, could be beside your bed or wherever, uh, in your living room, etc. And then the last one's kind of a task lamp, which is a very soft uh, object. Not task in the sense of, let's say, traditional task where lamps really move and try to do a lot. I always thought that you know a nice task lamp can be just something that doesn't even move at all. It's just there and if you move it you can actually just move the object itself because it's so light and simple. I started DJing when I was 16 or 15 years old so basically I've been DJing uh, 35 years almost and uh, when I started DJing at that time there was two ty typologies of music that I love. Disco because disco was being made electronically and it, I actually remember the first, what they called 48 track record, which was Donna Summer, I Feel Love. And I had a 21 minute version of it that I used to play. And when you played it, it took you in a kind of trance. It took you in a place that electronic music can take you. And that place, which is beautiful, has no timeline, no pre-association. It's here now. And that's the beautiful thing about electronic music. It can touch you right in the moment. It's almost a way you can perceive the world like a child can when you listen to electronic, a certain type of electronic music. You know, after uh, being a product designer for about 20 years, I, I, uh, I was craving to be able to do a space. And the reason being is I, A, wanted to see, you know, be challenged and see what I can do in it. And, uh, and then second of all, because, you know, if you want to touch in a way a different kind of emotional experience of, of humanity, then space is a different animal than an object, let's say, right? But in general, the world's kind of, I re what I realize about the world is, 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 is what I've struggled with. It's very conservative, you know. The majority of the world is super conservative. And I'm, I'm not, at least, you know, it's hard to be that uh, objective of oneself, but it's not like I'm crazy or eccentric. I kind of know what I'm doing. I'm really pragmatic and I'm really down to earth in a way. But the minute people see things like, you know, decoration and color and, you know, these kind of forms I do and all that, most, most, of, the, most of the world is afraid of this. Because the reality is most of the world sees the past and they're not living in the present. They're living in the past. You know. But really, again, just to reiterate this as a designer, you're, you're really here to be so highly perceptive of the present to in order to shape this future. So down some of the norms of how we think about color. And if we look at the Munsell color wheel, for example, and all the notions of, let's say, 20th century color theory, I think that we've gone way beyond it. And the fact that in this digital age, we can create with pixels, basically million, two million colors, we should really exploit and really, how can I say, celebrate, engage color. It's a beautiful, sensual phenomenon. I was, I'm, I'm a huge, huge, huge believer that we should be embracing 
time we live in. Like really, like wow, you know. I got to design the first restaurant for Morimoto, who was like an iron chef, uh, very famous from television, and I got to do his first restaurant, and I did that project, and I was, and I, I you know, I have to say, like, just for the scale, I actually had no idea what I was doing, you know. The, on the human scale, I knew really good, because I knew, understood tables, chairs, all that kind of thing. But in the sense of sort of understanding space planning and making sure a restaurant can really be organized and work, you know, I went through a lot, and I, I, I ended up, Fortunately, and I, I guess I realized I was kind of better than I thought I was at doing it. I ended up at a really successful restaurant, which until today in Philadelphia, it's, it's his most successful restaurant. And it, and it stood up beautifully, physically, you know, which, uh, which I was very proud of. And then that kind of, in a way, was a domino effect for me doing a lot more projects. And then I did my first hotel in Athens, Greece, uh, with uh, Dacus Yanu, and I loved that project because uh, it was the first boutique hotel, 54 rooms. And in those experiences, I started trying to do things that uh, kind of created, uh, a little, injected a little bit of humor, but also injected a kind of a positive emotional spirit, which I realize is what I try to do in my objects too in product design, is to make people feel alive and feel very, very happy and, and, and almost like aware, uh, phenomenologically, like aware that they exist. But that, that moment that you feel that you're alive is what I was trying to touch in all my projects. The hotels I'm working on, every one of them, I think about this kind of idea that you're there for a very short period of time, that you should have this experience that you would never have anywhere else. Subway was exactly what I was trying to do, what I would try to do in a hotel or a restaurant or a home, personal home or anything, is that you've got six minutes in that station at the most. So what can I discuss or, or comment on or how can I touch you or how can I motivate you emotionally and sensorially in six minutes? That was my kind of approach. Um, and, uh, and especially when you're seven in the morning and you have to like go to university or work and you're, you know, the last thing you're interested in is, is being part of the world, you know? So you have your cup of coffee in your hand and you start going into the subway and it's like, a, it's alive and it wakes you up and it's, it's uh, informative and it's a bit of, a bit of infotainment. And you go, when you go downstairs in the piazza, for example, the first thing is all the tiles, which are really conventional tiles that remind you of Paris or New York subway stations, you know, these kind of white tiles. They all have text written on them. There's 2,000 words there that never existed 30 years ago. So all those words, every day you walk down there, you're going to kind of see some words that are, you know, that are our new global vocabulary.